have my pastry out of the fridge. It's been there for oh, a little over two hours just because I had to do something else. And so now I'm rolling it out. Now to get a nice round roll. So this is me making quiche. The pastry, um, if you want to learn how to make short crust prep, short crust pastry that's on another YouTube clip so this is just one portion of short crust pastry and so I've made it and it's rested for supposed to at least an hour and so the way to really get is to turn as you go now I've got a little bit of flour here but really um, it's great this is sort of a Caesar stone bench so it just and you just you keep moving it around and rolling it from the inside out now the key to a good quiche base is to make sure it's not too thin because I'm just going to turn that over squish that together um, make sure it's not too thin because you want to be able to cut it and serve it so but then you don't want it too thick either so there's a delicate balance and so you can see I'm just moving it around um, it's really important if you want to round turn that over squish that together it happens there's nothing you can do if you want a round one, you just have to be patient. That's just a little bit, and just work from the inside out. Okay, my pastry dish. A little bit more. When you get towards the end, I just leave it on the bench and work from the inside out. Just make sure you get a nice even okay so I've got my great quiche dish it's my favorite and so I just put some butter in this has got a recipe in it but I like mine better <laughs> and so my hands are clean which is lovely and I'm just making sure that it's well buttered so all I do is pick up the pastry like this and transfer it to the quiche dish. And there we go. Well, it'd be great if it was that easy, but now we have to get it into the actual dish. So obviously, make sure that it's sitting right into the bottom of the dish. All right, and you've got all these bits and you know, oh, what am I supposed to do? <clears throat> Excuse me. What am I supposed to do with all these? Well, you just gently work your way up. Sometimes you might get some crossover, but I think that if you do, that's a little bit of crossover there. But you've got to make sure that it's sitting right in the bottom. There's another little bit of crossover, but really, it's pretty good. So that's my quiche dish. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm not going to cut it yet. And so I'm going to pop that back into the fridge because if you, while I make the mixture that goes in it, because if you put it in the fridge, the colder the pastry is, the crispier and nicer it's going to be when it cooks. That's a tip. So I'm just going to pop this into the fridge and then I'll start with making the actual ingredients that goes in the quiche. So I've just put the pastry case back in the fridge while I get everything ready for the actual quiche. Now it's important, there's two onions. It's important that when you cut up the onions, you try to do it small. I actually prefer green onions or shallots. Um, well, they're called shallots in Australia. Um, but 
Onions are fine. I just didn't have any, so that's what happened this week. It, you know, it's, I'm just using what I've got. Okay, and so then I've got about four mushrooms, and I just slice them thinly. So they're there, and I've got um, some bacon. I'm just going to put the turn the gas on. Put the onions in. There's just a tablespoon of coconut oil in here. So we'll just turn that around so you can see me. Yay! Okay, so I'm going to cut up the bacon now. I like to use a different board when I'm cutting meat. Um, I don't know, it's just me. I'm just going to roughly chop this bacon. I've got to say, this actually is the best bacon that I've ever tasted. I'm, I'm not sure whether it's the best bacon on the face of the planet. That's a big call, but <laughs> I haven't tasted all the bacon. But this is from Elite Meats at Boona. And you go, where's Boona? Well, exactly. But I was teaching out there, teaching music. And, um, and seriously, they would smoke their own. They smoke their own bacon and it tastes like everyone's happy. The pigs are happy. Butcher's happy and it's just a great place. Makes me happy because I'm happy. Everyone's doing clap along if you feel like happiness is the truth. Anyway, <laughs> that's just me being silly. So a bit of Farrell Williams there. I love that song, it always makes me happy. Huh? Alright, so I've got probably about three rashes of bacon. Um, so I've got that. So the onions on the stove. Put them away. I don't like to put garlic in. I, I don't know. You can, but it's up to you. Hang on. I'll just turn it on. So, the onions cooking away. As you can see, this is so professional. <laughs> Alright, so then the bacon goes in. Cooking, cooking. So the bacon has, and onions have been cooking for about three minutes. Um, you want to make sure, the key to a really good quiche is making sure that um, there's no excess water. So I'm going to put the mushrooms in now. Now these have a lot of water in them. So you want to cook the mushrooms until you make sure they're all gone, so the water's gone. Not so it's dead, but you know, just the bulk of the water. Now, if you don't want to have bacon, put some already cooked, wilted and drained spinach and mushrooms. That makes it vegetarian. Um, or you could just have mushrooms and onion, that's fine. Um, I like to put tomatoes on the top, but not actually in it because I find that it um, gets a bit soggy. So we don't want soggy fish. Right. So this has been cooking for about another two or three minutes and it's almost ready. Most of the water is out of the mushrooms. Turn that off. And so you've got, how do you see that? It's just a mushroom, onion, and bacon mix. So we want that to cool. It's really important that that cools. And then to a bowl, we're going to add six eggs. So I've already got five in the bowl and a bit of something, something for extra. And you also want 450 mils of cream. Now, a lot of them say half milk, half um, cream, but I just use all cream. So, <laughs> what's new? So, so, you just have to um, whisk that together. I'm just using a fork. Now, oh, yeah, so 300 mils of cream and 150 mils of milk or 450 mils of cream. 
All right, so I'm just going to put a bit of pepper in here. I don't like to salt, believe it or not, I don't like to salt the quiche because you've got the bacon in it. Um, if it needs salt after, then individual people can put it on. So there you go. So we've got our egg mixture ready, we've got our um, mushroom and onion and bacon mixture and the only other thing we need is cheese. So I use one cup of tasty cheese and one cup of parmesan cheese. So now we're going to put it all together. P.S. My oven is on. 190 degrees. I should have said that first. 190 degrees on fan bake or, yeah, so make sure it's 190 degrees. So if you don't have a fan forced oven, then it's 190. If you do have a fan forced oven, might have to be a little bit less. So um, I'll, I like just that extra 10 degrees. It helps with the crisping up the other bit. And so I've put, taken my pastry case out of the oven. First thing I'm going to do is put one cup of tasty cheese. And one cup of parmesan. It's already grated. I normally like to use fresh parmesan, but this is just easier because it's in the freezer. So one cup of tasty, one cup of parmesan, pop that on the bottom and you've got your cooled bacon, onion and mushroom mixture. This is a sort of a key, a quiche Lorraine doesn't normally have um, mushrooms in it but I like mushrooms. And then you pour your egg mixture in. I like to grab a little spoon and just move, make sure the egg gets all the way down. There's all the bubbles are coming where it's moving into the. You've got to be really careful when you do this. And so then, I'm just going to put that there. And I grab a really nice ripe tomato. And I cut some slices. And I just like, oh, I like, I just carefully lay them on the top. One, just need one more. I'll use the tomato for lunch today, so no waste. And then I like to put a little cracked pepper on the top just because. So there we go, there's our quiche Lorraine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the pastry off. It's easier to do it when it's um, not full of quiche but I think that when you do it with it up like that, you get most of the edge. So you can see I've got the beautiful quiche room with my little floaty tomatoes. Now that's going in the oven for 30 minutes. So 30 minutes and then check. You want it to be cooked but still a little bit wobbly because it's going to keep cooking, you don't want it too dry. Okay, so I'll be back when it's cooked to show you the finished product. 
The quiche that I put in the oven took 45 minutes to cook, so not half an hour, 45 minutes, sorry about that. And then I turned off the oven and just let it cool in the oven for about 20 minutes. And this is the result. Oh, yum. So this is a beautiful, beautiful quiche. Perfect. And so it, I will just sit it there to let it cool for about another, I don't know, 10 minutes. Well, I just wanted to prove that my beautiful quiche came out. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Very easy. Okay.